fans. Who has Uni installed? Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, so if you didn't hear Uni beforehand, uh, you should probably like go to that link and install a Uni package, or just like download it. Um, I'll like teach you how to like import that into your Uni. You are live. Hmm? I'm live. Is sound good? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so, does everyone have that package installed or like downloaded? Okay, cool. So, what you're uh, going to want to do is. Hey, yeah. What's up? No. Oh, oh, wait. <laughs> Oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what you're going to want to do is... Yeah. Um, completely forgot about that. Part. Okay. Uh, I think it's like display HDMI. Okay, cool. But you should create the project from scratch. And then well, I mean, like, from scratch. From scratch. New project. Good. Okay. Well. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to our Unity hub or like just Unity and create a new project. Uh, and we want to do two D this time. And just create that. Oh, and uh, just a heads up before we start, like, we're gonna go pretty fast on this, or like, we're just gonna try to get in, like, I don't know, just at a really fast pace. We're gonna skip some few details. We're just trying to get as much in as possible for Game Jam. If you really wanna come back and learn, we're actually hosting, like, Unity workshops throughout the year, which I think they start, at least the Unity one starts, I think, February 18th. So, and we're just gonna go more in detail and it's gonna be more slow paced. Cool, cool. Okay. Uh, does everyone have Unity loaded? Like, no? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. I mean, I'm trying to like just hit the time mark, but. So just a raise of hands, who has this up right now? Okay, cool. Change the stream's name. You have, you have to do it on Twitch. On Twitch? Uh, I love Pixel 8. Huh? Yeah. Oh, wait. You're still on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I think 
I think I got it. I don't know if you should log it on the screen. I, I mean, I have like, yeah, yeah, no, you, you got it, right? Okay, cool. Is anyone still waiting for their uni to load? Mm -hmm. You? Okay. Cool, just like give me a heads up when you're... Yeah. Can this live stream be like saved so we can watch it later? Yeah, yeah it's. I think. Um, does it does it save on Twitch? Uh, no, but we'll post it on YouTube. Yeah. Cool. cool. Um. Sorry, oh, you're all good. Oh, but about our YouTube, we also have a bunch of like workshops from last semester. Oh, really? Yeah. So if you want to check those out, yeah. go for it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna move on now. So you download a. You probably downloaded a thing from the um, tiny URL, but we want to put that in Unity. It's a Unity package, and it basically just includes like a lot of things um, that we're gonna be using right now. So just go to um, let's see, assets, then import package, and custom package, and just find whatever you put it, and just open it. You should also be able to drag it in directly from your file. Yeah, and just press import, put it in, drag it in. Cool. Okay, so now we see like there's some changes in our assets. Uh, and basically with the project folder, just going off track a bit, the project folder is like where um, everything, like all your assets are going to like lie. So let's see, um, these are folders I made. Uh, start, this is basically just like what we're starting off of. And I think we're already in here, just in the sample scene. Um, catch up is like if, if you like uh, get lost or just, you know, like couldn't get something finished before I moved on. There's some uh, like already pre-made things, so you like won't get that like you won't, you know, just get lost and get too far behind. Uh, yeah. And we can see, like, art. We have, like, you know, some, you know, some astronauts and a background and scripts. These are two, like, scripts I've written. Just pretty simple things. We're just going to, you know, drag them onto our, like, game objects beforehand. Uh, so does everyone have that loaded? Okay, cool. So uh, I guess right now, I'm just going to start like talking about some things. Uh, so in Unity, there is something called a game object, and that's basically just anything that's inside your game, right? So um, I guess like, let's go off this first. Um, here's a scene, and this is basically where everything in your game is going to lie. So let's just you know make an empty object, and you can see right here. Oh, and just to follow along, let me redo that. Uh, to make a new game object, you just go like over here. This is one of the ways to do it. You can just do uh, create, and there's like these different types. Uh, here's an empty one, where it's like it's just it's empty. It doesn't really do anything. Um, so let's just make something, and you can see like right here, a new thing called game object popped up. So what you usually do, you should probably rename that. Just rename it to like whatever you want it to be. For this one, we'll just say test one, right? And it should show up here. And this bar right here, 
what it actually is. It's the hierarchy, and this is where you're gonna organize all your game objects, and you can like see all your game objects. Um, yeah. But before we go into that, let's talk about what a game object is. Uh, like I said, a game object it um, it's just something that exists in your like Unity scene. You can like sometimes it's like a sprite, sometimes it's an object. Uh, it really depends. It's yeah. But um, one of the main things you want to do to a game object is give it like a component. And if you just press Add Component after you select a game object, like let's say like we're just here, and how you select it is you just go to your hierarchy and you click it. And right here in your um, inspector should be called inspector right here. You can see something called add component, right? So if you click that, you can see, hey, there's like all these different types of components. These are actually categories for components, but you know, see all these cool things like physics, there's so many, right? But what components are is they kind of just add like um, functionality to your game objects. So if you want to like, let's say, um, I don't know, give it physics, right? You'd add, give it a, like, a physics you know, game object and it, it can like, gravity applies to it now. Uh, what else? I think there's like sound or, I don't know what it's called. Oh, audio. Audio, you can give it audio. You can have like music playing from that game object. So, yeah. Any questions so far? Or, now we all good? Okay, cool. And uh, let's just start off by like making a game object. So to make a game object, um, let's just delete this first. You can either just like create it here, like oh, I want an empty one, right? Or I guess in this case, we want like let's try getting our astronaut on the string. So let's uh, create a game object, and it's a 2D object, right? So let's just give it a sprite. And right here we see in the inspector, hey, we um, there's like these two, this component, the sprite renderer, right? That's already there. What we can do is we can just press this sprite thing right now, and just select. Uh, oh, geez, we can just select like an astronaut picture. So yeah, and right now, like on our screen, we have a game object that's an astronaut. But a second way to do it is actually to um, instead of like, you know, making pressing create and like making a new game object, we can just go to our picture right here. Uh, if you go into the art folder and just like uh, just drag that in and that actually makes one. It makes a game object for you. Okay, cool. And um, yeah, see when you make a game object you can see like on the side there's actually these uh, components and this is like, this comes to follow with everything. It's just like the position, it's scaling factor, and it's rotation. Um, for this one, we'll just scale it down a bit. We can either like just touch the numbers or we can just like drag it, but let's just scale it down. And what we want to do right now is actually give this uh, physics. So let's just go to our component, right? We want to add like functionality to this. We're going to give it physics. Let's just go to add component and touch physics 2D. And the reason we're doing physics 2D instead of just physics is because um, we're making a 2D game, right? So all of our like interactions are gonna be in 2D. And uh, I guess like a mistake some people usually do is like get them mixed. You shouldn't do that since physics 3D and physics 2D, like they don't really interact with each other. So I mean, I guess it's possible to make a 2D game with like 3D physics, but like it's funky, you know? Because, like, I guess it's just going off tangent. Like, for 2D games, it's basically just, like, a 3D space, but they just lock it into 2D. So, yeah. We actually use two different physics engines. Yeah. So Do there's they? actually a specific 2D physics engine called Box2D that they use. So. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's why you don't mix them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's, like, um, collision, like, box. Boxes don't work into it. Like they don't um, collide with box colliders 2Ds. Yeah, they're separate. Yeah. 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 Making something independent. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, let's just go add a component. And when you want to add physics to a thing, you have to uh, first add something called a rigid body. And this basically just defines like 
you know, this thing's going to be using physics. Uh, and it's usually just in physics. Just go to physics 2D, and it's all the way at the bottom. Just rigid body 2D. Cool. And uh, just test it out. Like, hit play, and it's going to play your game. Nothing's really going to happen except you can see your astronaut now has physics. And let me just, like, show you what happens if you don't have a rigid body. It doesn't have physics. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, it's spicy. Uh, anyways, let's re add that. Okay. Cool. Um, but here's like something that's like. When you add a rigid body, it just like adds physics, like oh, it interacts with gravity and stuff. But some um, like without adding something called a collider, it won't actually collide with other objects. Like uh, let's just say let's drag into a platform, right? And let's give this a rigid body. And um, just just for the, I'll go over the body types later, but we're just gonna set this to static. We can see, like right now, these are both rigid bodies. They both have rigid bodies, um, but like that should not just go straight through, right? But in, like most games, you probably want the player to like land on the platform instead of go straight through. So you need to add something called a, a collider. So that's another component. Same thing as before. Just go to uh, you know your physics 2D slot. Then, as you can see, there's like a bunch of like colliders. Usually, you're probably going to only use like box collider, a capsule collider, a circle collider. Um, yeah. Don't don't use the polygon collider though. It's, it's yeah. Okay, so for this one, let's just give it a box collider, and uh, this one, let's also give it a box collider. Actually, let, let's just see beforehand. We gave um we gave the astronaut a box collider. It'll still go through since it's not interacting with any other colliders. So for this, we actually have to give the um, platform a collider too. And just give another box collider. Oh, and uh, our like sprite was weirdly shaped, so we have to edit the collider a bit. And to do that, right? Oh, to see how it was like oddly shaped, like when we click the platform, we can see like the area of the platform is actually like this whole box instead of just like the platform. So let's just edit the collider. You click the game object and uh, you go down to the box collider 2D and you can see this like little button right here. It looks like an upside down check mark. Just press that and you can just like adjust like you know the area of the collider. Cool. cool. And if we were to play now, yeah, it works. Physics, uh, cool. And um, I guess right now, like, just as a little activity. Oh wait, actually, uh, scratch that. Um, I'm gonna teach you something about prefabs. So what prefabs are? Um, they're like. See, uh, we made a game object, right? We made um, an astronaut, it has all these properties, but most of the time, like, you know, you don't want to keep on remaking the same game object every time you need it. So you can actually uh, store one. You can actually, like, store it and make copies of it. So let's just, uh, you know, let's make a new folder. And to do that, just go to click your assets thing, just create and folder. Let's call it prefabs. And how you make a prefab is um, you basically just go to the game object and you grab it and just you know drag it in there. And if you see that, like oh, we can have multiple astronauts. Yeah, and um, like if you resize one, the others don't really resize unless you like you know s you know uh, what's called apply that change everything. But we'll we'll like worry about that later. So uh, going off that. Uh, let's do a, like a short activity where just like make some kind of small map. Um, and I think for our 
if you go to the start, there is also something. Oh no. Okay, yeah. So just like make a platform by yourself and just play some platforms, you know, like around. Uh, also made some things. If you go to the catch up area, I forgot to include Sprite for it, but if you go to the prefabs, there's something called spikes. If you want to just drag those in, that's also, you know, you can go do that. Yeah. And feel free to ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what's up? Do you want to tell oh, yeah, yeah, I was going to do that later, but... Well, they're building levels, so... Huh? Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so, um, I guess... No, uh... Could... Huh? Oh, okay. So, uh, if you want to add, like, functionality to your players, just, like, uh, if you go to our... the start thing, you can see a folder called scripts, and I just made a simple, like, a script called moving. It'll just move, uh, it'll let your character move. And how to apply the script to your like player is just like click it and just drag it into like whatever game object you want. In this case, I dragged it to the um, astronaut. But another way to do it is like you know go to add component uh, scripts. Then you can see hey, there's like these two scripts. I'll uh, give it moving. Spikes is for another thing. Uh, you actually don't have to worry about spikes. Just give it moving. But yeah. But now if you uh, press play. Uh, you know, if you can, you can move with your arrows and jump with space. Cool. Oh, do you want to talk about parenting? Hmm? 
Uh, yeah. I, I mean, is anyone still like just messing around with Unity right now? Okay, I, I'm just gonna talk about parenting then. Um. Okay, so let's see. Yeah. So um, your game job, your game objects can actually have like some parent-child relation. So um, let's say like this. I'm just gonna make a new game object. Let's make it empty, and we'll call it, uh, you know, the parent, right? And for this parent, it's just like some empty game object. Uh, but let's say we want to like give it a platform, right? And I'm just gonna show you the relationship between them. So let's give it a platform. Uh, let's just spin it down. Let's give it two children. Cool. Yeah, so let's say, like, oh, right now, like, um, they're, like, kind of grouped together. This parent, its two children are these two platforms on top. And basically, um, for this, like, if you apply changes to the parent, the um, child would kind of reflect that, um, but kind of reflect on the ch uh, children. That came out right, right? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of, okay. Anyways, so let's say, like, uh, for this parent, right, we drag it around. Let's say like well, we just move it around, right? Let's say let's move it to the right by five. Um, its children will move to um, with it, and let's just like scale it, right? Let's scale it by two. Its children will scale by a factor of two. Um, but an interesting case is like actually the children, right? So if you move it, let's say um, you know five, right? It'll move. Um, I mean, if you change the position to five, it'll change the position to five, but not relative to like. I guess the center of the game space, but relative like to the parent. So um, some easy math. Let's say the parent was like at um, location like its x is one, right? Um, and for the child, you have its like position as five, right? The like actual, the actual position of the child would be six, since it's like you know it's five away from um, the what's called parent. Cool. Yeah. Is anyone still working on their level or no? All good. Okay. Uh, right now, I'm just gonna talk a little about physics. So, uh, like a few minutes ago, we just talked about like oh, rigid bodies, colliders. But if you go to a rigid body, we kind of skipped over this, but we're going back to it. You can see uh, there's actually, oh, it's actually um, you know three different body types for rigid bodies, at least. 2D ones. Um, so there's dynamic, there's kinematic, and static. So I'm just gonna go over these. Uh, dynamic, that's like, I guess, just imagine real life, right? A real life object. You drop it, it falls, it bounces off another. Like if it hits another, um, you know, rigid body, it'll just bounce off it. So yeah, just imagine a real life object. Kin um, let's skip kinematic for now, and let's just go to static. Static is, um, so I guess gravity, it doesn't work on it, it doesn't move. Um, even if you like have code that supposedly moves a game object, it won't move it. So, but it can still interact with like, other objects. It just won't be affected by it. So um, yeah, let's say we have, oh wait, yeah, like this, um, our platform, right? We changed it to static. We made it static, as you can see here. So that means gravity, as you saw, gravity didn't affect it, but it was still like holding the um, player up when it fell on it, right? So now, uh, here's a weird one. It's called kinematic. It's like kind of the same thing as um, static, except uh, you can actually move it through like code or like just any script. Yeah. So like if you want to make moving platforms? Yeah. Any questions so far? Nah, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, and um, a thing about colliders is it doesn't always have to like stop an object from moving. So um, if we go down here, a, a collider is basically just like recognizes collision. Um, so if you go right here, right, and you do like is trigger, 
if you change the collider to an is trigger, um, it won't it actually won't like it won't you know it won't stop the object from like going through it, but um, it'll still like detect a collision, right? And um, that collision you can like you know you can use that like in your code. It's like oh it detected like something interacted with it. You can use that to trigger some like you know functionality you want. And basically the only um, like the only how to change it, how to make one that's a trigger is just you know check that. And uh, a cool thing is for um, I guess objects for game objects you can actually give it to uh, multiple colliders. So for this one, like let's say you want something um, that's like I don't know. Let's say the Earth, right? Uh, let's say we want the you know we can make a model of the Earth. We have like a sphere. And you know, if something crashes to the Earth, it's gonna like stop because you know it hits the Earth, right? But let's say we want it to be affected by gravity. So uh, what we can do is we can uh, let's see. I'll just make it. We can make a. Where's my default? Yeah, oh, that's tiny. Uh, yeah. So for this, we can just give it a uh, collider. And this time, let's give it a spear collider, or a circle collider. And this one, this is going to represent like the actual, you know, like body of the Earth. But uh, we let's say we want like something to you know trigger gravity, right? And let's give it like another circle collider. But this one's actually a trigger, and we're just going to make it a bit larger, right? Cool. Okay, cool. So what's gonna happen is, um, so right now, just like as it is, there's no script to it. But like, let's say, like my mouse is like a little game object, right? It's a little spaceship. It's like going towards here. Uh, it's gonna enter this first like collider, and it's just gonna like send a signal. It's like, hey, something collided with it, but it's actually not gonna stop that game object. It's um, a little, little ship, my mouse. It's actually only gonna stop once it hits, like, collides with the first one, um, the innermost one. Cool. Uh, what else? Okay. Cool. So just for now, know that, like, what triggers are and that they exist. And uh, I guess, like, kind of jumping away from, like, editor stuff, we're going to go into, I guess, like, you know, write and make your own scripts. And what scripts are, they're just like, I guess, user-defined components. So um, to make a new script, let's go to our scripts folder. You actually don't have to go to your scripts folder. You can just make it anywhere. But, you know, organization's pretty good. And just make a C-sharp script. And I'm just call it test2, or whatever you want to name it. So that's actually how you make a script. And to edit it, just double-click it. And it should open up your text editor. Cool. Um, yeah. And uh, if like you think opening up your text editor is pretty slow through Visual, like through Unity, it's uh. <laughs> You might be using Visual Studios instead of Visual Studios code. So if you want to like, you know, have a lighter system, like a lighter software, you should uh, just Google how to change your default text editor to VS Code. It's like much faster. It's a lot better, in my opinion, but yeah. Cool. And I'm just gonna start, I guess. Uh, so when you make like a um, you know a new script, you'll see there's like two functions that like defaultly you know come with it. It's start and update. So I mean like I guess the names are pretty self-explanatory. Like start, it's whenever um, you know like this this like function gets called whenever. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Just to backtrack a bit, if you don't like, I guess if you don't like you know just want to learn how to like script it that's completely fine just like mess around with the editor for a bit but it's this part
parts like completely option. I mean, I guess this whole workshop's op optional, but uh, <laughs> yeah, like you, if you don't care about goading, it's fine not to fall. Like, you know, fall along. Just like, I don't know, mess with the like assets we gave you. But for those who do wanna, I guess, just fall along, um, I'm just gonna go on. So, uh, what was I saying? Start, right? So it's, it does exactly what it's like, you know, named after. Whenever a game object gets created, right? Uh, not when the game starts, but when it gets created, this function gets called once. And uh, it's like, oh, what's the difference, right? So I guess let's say like um, we have game objects on our screen and those get like kind of created like whenever, you know, like the game, like you hit play, right? But let's say uh, you, I don't know, you have like some script that creates an object mid-game, then this, uh, this function is going to be called whenever that's created. Okay, so that's only called once. Now for update, um, update, it's a function that gets called every frame, like the description right here. And uh, what that means is, does everyone know what a while loop is? It's like, just imagine a giant, like, a while loop that keeps on going and going and going. It's called every frame and whatever, like, whatever, like, code is in here, it keeps on running every frame. And, like, that's how you get, like, stuff like movement. Uh, yeah, and just other things, whatever you want, I guess. Does No? Cool, cool. And let's see. Start update one sheet. Okay, cool. So um, let's just backtrack instead of like let's close that one. We don't really need it need it right now. And let's just open um like a script, the moving script, right? I already have made. So let's just double click that. So, um, cool. If everyone has that open, you can see, like, right here. You don't have to understand everything. I'm just going to go through some, like, key things. So, right here, you can see uh, this line. You have something called, like, a rigid um, body, like, 2D object that's named RB. And it's like, hey, that, that name sounds familiar. That's actually a component type, right? Of, like, what we added to our components. So, yeah. So it's, it's just that right now, like in this line of code, it's just an empty container. It's not referencing anything, but uh, it should like have this type. This line right now, so like um, RB in our start, we're just like, hey, we wanna get this object. We wanna get a reference to this uh, rigid body, right? So we just say RB, which is a rigid body two type. It's like, oh, it's just a special method. It's like get component, then rigid body. Um, Usually I think, and how this knows, like, how this script knows, like, hey, we want, like, the rigid body of this object, right, is because, like, if you just don't put anything and just put get component, that's just going to take it from whatever game object you put the script on. And, you know, that, that can, like, you can get it from any other thing. You can get any other thing from this, like, get component. Uh, let's say, like, I don't know, let's say you have an empty transform object. It's like, oh, transform, I'll get the transform object. Yeah, so that's that's neat. So um, yeah, so right here, just like in start, we're getting the rigid body, and why we want that is because to like actually move an object or give it velocity, we want to like change its properties uh, whenever we do something. And how we're like how we know how we want to do something is like through our update function, right? So uh, this yeah, this is kind of it's code. Uh, but it's like, oh, just, we're just, um, you know, reading key input right here, and whenever we press a button, we're just gonna, like, change the velocity of, like, that rigid body, which, you know, like, which is in charge of its physics. And, uh, for, like, Unity, they use a lot of vector threes, and just, like, a little tip about that, um, you can't actually... I guess once you can't actually change a vector three once it's made. So let's say like, oh, um, it's, you know, 
like let's say its velocity is like zero 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 right but you want it to move it to like one zero 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 we can't do like oh this velocity plus equals or just like add a new vector to it you have to make a new vector and just like individually like get its parts and do the get the, like that's confusing um so let's say you get the you have to like make a copy of its old velocity you just grab it, grab its like x value, then just like add one to it to make a new vector. Then you like s set that vector as its new like whatever you know, its velocity, its position. Yeah. Uh, so if you're familiar with Java, they like strings in Java. They're mutable. Yeah. So you can't change it. So they act kind of similar to that. Cool. Yeah. Was that confusing? I mean, that that kind of confused me while saying it, but. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? I can like re go over it if you do. Um, I think it's What's up? Can't you like change change the um like what the buttons do in the properties so you don't have to like write code? For yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Y Ian like told me about that. I just this this from the last semester. I just didn't change oh. it in time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. And um, let's see, rigid bodies. Okay, so one cool thing uh, is we can actually like, like I said before, we can like um, do things whenever collisions happen, whether it's with a tr like, I guess it collides or if it's with a trigger. So there's some function like right here. We already have this. Just a bit of a jump, but uh, there's some functions like on collision enter. Uh, and on trigger -ter. and um, what these functions do is I guess these top two on collision enter and on um, what's it called the on collision enter and on collision enter 2D how they're different is on collision enter only works for 3D objects so if you're making a 2D game and you're making like 2D rigid bodies, you want to use a second method rather than the first one. And the uh, same thing with on trigger enter and on um, trigger enter 2D. Yeah. Cool. So, um, same. So, what like the top few methods? Uh, Kind of same gist. It's like the names basically say, like, tell you what they're about. On question enter, it's um, this function's called whenever, like, in Unity, right? Like, uh, that g the game object that, like, this script is attached to, whenever it collides with an op another object, both a collider, this method's going to be called. And uh, on trigger enter, kind of same thing, but with triggers. Cool. S any questions? What is the other thing? Oh, yeah. So, um, do you know how, like, before, right? Actually, that, that doesn't make sense. Uh, how before, <laughs> uh, I told you, in order for a physics to happen, you need, um, yeah, you need, like, two colliders, right? Yeah. So, usually, sometimes when you want, like, want collision, like, when you want oh. detect a collision, you want, like, you want to know what collided with it, right? Yeah. So, like, the other is just a reference to whatever it collides with. Thank you. Yeah. It also has a bunch of specific collision data. So you can get the game object that collided from that. Yeah. Okay. There's also a lot of other collision data that yeah. you can gather from that object. Okay. Cool. Uh, Did I miss anything? Does anyone have a question over anything about this? Like not not just this, just like this whole talk in general. Mm. You want to talk about public fields? And what public? Oh yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, so at the top, right? Let's say for moving, um, we have like, I guess if you take in, if you take in like some programming like course or just know a bit of programming, you know, like, oh, private and public is like for classes, right? It's like 
private, only like an object itself can like, you know, change its fields and like public anything else can. Uh, so in Unity, it's actually, they have this like cool thing where a private thing, private, it's like kind of the same, it stays hidden. But if you have something called like public, right? Public int the test three, I don't know. You can actually like, if you go to an editor, if you go in your editor, you can see, um, and you go to the, like the game object that it's at, you can see like, hey, you actually have a field named test three now. So that's pretty cool. And um, you can like change its value. So for this one, right? So if we look at our code, like test three, it doesn't have anything assigned to it, right? So, um, but by like having it, like giving a value in the editor, it'll just like whenever the game starts, it'll just set that value to like five or whatever value you give it to. Uh, you can actually give it to like default values, I think. So just, you know, test three equals six. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, so if you don't change anything, that'll just like defaultly be there. Actually, Values no, really default like on top, right? Yeah, yeah my bad. Yeah. Six. Yeah, but so in this case, um, it'll just like, so it'll say it's six in the code, but if you give it a value, like right here, it'll just change to five. But if you don't give it anything, it'll still be six. Huh? <sighs> yeah. So, um, Right here, here's your console, I guess. So like, if you have any errors, it'll usually be like in some like really red you know, text. So let's just make an error right now. Uh, equals, I don't know. Uh, actually, that might, yeah. Do it, I'm just graphics, Yeah, okay. So you give it like a wrong type. So see an error right here. Or I actually think, doesn't it like also give like compilation here? Huh? Yeah. So let's say instead it's like, oh, I didn't put a semicolon. It'll just, yeah, tell you what went wrong. Cool. It also shouldn't debug that long. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so there's this cool, like, you know, command you can do. It's like, if you just want to debug, let's just say here, debug dot log, oh, geez. <laughs> okay, yeah, so debug dot log. So in these parameters, you can just, like, have things print. Let's say I want, um, you know, whatever test three is. I'll print a three. See, it's like, oh, it's, oh wait, I mean not a three. It'll print a five since it's set to five. And you can give it something more readable, like, you can give it a string, the wrong, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of similar to like uh, if you're in code, you're trying to decode some, like debug something, you just put a bunch of print statements. Same gist. Very yeah. High yep. That's how I got out of OS, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, Does anybody want yeah. to know anything? I, I think we're like on time. I think. It's like 56. Any last questions? Yep. Um, so you know, you can, there's like inheritance in Unity, right? Like you can do the, instead of inheriting from monobanion, you, you can like change that to something else. Uh. Do you want to <laughs> inherit from? Go unless you know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, this I know. This is what I talk about. <laughs> I. <laughs> about inheritance before you mess around with it. I want to know if I can do a has a relationship. Mm -hmm. Does that still run the script? Huh? Does that still run the script if you don't it's inherited from, from mono, mono behavior? behavior? I don't, huh? No, like if it's not inherited from mono behavior, it just well, like. It depends. Do you conserve the object? Oh, fuck. Okay. No, go go to Ian's talk if you want to learn about that. Okay, it's. Talk, Ian. <laughs> Ask him. Ask him. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
No, 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 the YouTube. Oh, yeah, we have a bunch of like old videos on our YouTube, so. Well, I mean, let's just link both of them, right? Uh, yeah, but you know, check those out. We're trying to get monetized. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, talk. if you have any questions, just like feel free to ask. <laughs>